Hey everybody, welcome to Video Notes 8.3. We're going to be defining a few things, explaining a few things, and calculating a few things. So get your pens and pencils ready. Maybe have a calculator handy. And enjoy the heat miser song. Okay. All right, so heat of fusion. Heat of fusion is the heat it takes to freeze or melt something. So heat of fusion is going to be given in calories per gram because we want to compare all things. So we want to know how much heat it takes to melt one gram of a substance at its melting point or how much heat is absorbed. Um, it takes to freeze when um, one gram of a substance is at its freezing point. So heat of fusion has to be calories per gram or joules per gram. We could even do kilocalories per mole if we had to. All right. So there's an equation we use that has the heat of fusion in it, and it all depends on the mass for how much heat it takes. Okay, so if we're looking for the heat of fusion, we have 10 grams of shampoo, and it takes 166.3 joules of heat to melt it. At its melting point, what is the heat of fusion? Well, this is joules. Joules is a unit of heat, so that's our Q. So we have 166.3 joules. Is it going to be equal to the mass, 10 grams? All right, that's the mass. And what we're looking for is the heat it takes, the heat of fusion. So then to solve for this, we have to divide 10 on this side, get rid of it, and divide 10 on this side. And that's grams to get rid of it. And so we find out that it's going to be 16.63 what joules per gram, which is a unit for heat of fusion. Okay, so make sure that you get that. All right, and now we know how much heat it would take to melt one gram of that shampoo. Okay, uh, so what's the difference between that and this? Well, this is heat of vaporization. Vaporization is a liquid going to a gas. So it's the energy change when a substance boils or condenses. So we use the same number, whether it's going from a liquid to gas or going from a gas to a liquid, because it's going to be the same value. What's the difference? If it's going to liquid to gas, it's being added in. Gas to liquid is being released. So what are the units? Well, same. Calories per gram or joules per gram or kilocalories per mole. What equation can help us um, solve it or when do we have to use it? When the Q is equal to the mass times the heat of vaporization. So find delta H vape, okay, that's what we're finding, given mass in grams and heat in joules. All right, so let's plug in Q, 279 joules. It's going to be equal to the mass, 9.33 grams, times what we're looking for, heat of vaporization. Okay, so we got to get rid of the 9.33 grams by dividing. How do you get rid of it? If it's multiplied, you divide. So then our unit is going to be joules per gram. Excellent. That is a heat of vaporization unit. And when you divide that out, you get 29.90 joules per gram. So that's the delta H vaporization of that same shampoo, which makes our hair look so nice. It looks so nice. Okay. All right. So what kind of data are we going to be using? Well, um, this is delta H uh, fusion or solidification. So this has to do with the solid going to a liquid or a liquid going to a solid. So make sure to use this for freezing or melting. Delta H vape is for gas to liquid or liquid to gas. I mean, actually vaporization is liquid to gas. Condensation is gas to liquid. But it's the same value as long as there's a gas involved in the phase change. Okay. All right, so each part of a graph gets a calc. How much heat does it take to melt 20 grams of ice at 0 degrees and heat it to 25 degrees? So let's make a graph. The two temperatures are given are 0 degrees Celsius and 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so this is temperature in degrees Celsius. And this is heat. All right, so melt 20 grams of ice. Uh, melting is a phase change, so we have a flat line. Phase change, flat, flat line, solid is going to a liquid. Once it's all melted, though, we can raise the temperature because it's all liquid. Hey, there's two sections of a graph, so we have to use two heat equations. This equation is going to be Q equals MC delta T because there's a single state, slanting line, single state. To find heat for this one, we have to use Q equals M delta H. Which delta H? Well, if it's solid to liquid, we're going to be using that one. So then to get total heat, you have to add these together. 
So Q equals the mass, 20 grams, times, oh, C. C is specific heat of H2O. That's 1.0 calorie per gram degree Celsius. And then the temperature change is 25 minus 0 is 25 degrees Celsius, delta T. Okay. Um, and then the Q for the phase change is the mass of the substance, 20 grams, times the delta H of fusion of H2O. And you could look that up on your pink sheet, calories per gram. And so the first Q, well, not the first one. The first Q is melting Q, and that's going to be 160 calories. And let me see what happens. We cancel out. It's 160 calories. So we have 160 calories for that first Q. Plus, the second Q is going to be 20 times 25, which is 500 calories. Because, look, grams cancels grams, Celsius cancels. All right. Plus 500 calories. So for this whole process, the total heat is going to be 660 calories. All right. So every, every part of a graph gets a calc. Okay, so let's draw a graph so we know how many calcs to do. We have negative 6 degrees Celsius, and our temperature is in degrees Celsius, and then we have 116 degrees Celsius. All right, so um, it's ice, and uh, we're starting as ice. Okay, well, if we look at this, we know this is H2O. Special things for H2O are zero is going to melt and at 100 it's going to freeze. Okay, so to draw a heating curve for this process, we got to go up when it's all solid, but then it's going to phase change flat line, so it's going to turn to liquid. And then after it's all liquid, it can change its temperature. At 100 degrees, the liquid's going to turn to gas, and then at 116, it's going to be all gas. How many sections of the graph? Five, all right? Each section gets its own Q, okay? So we're going to have Q. For solid, so we're going to need the mass of the ice, 5 grams, right. um, times the specific heat of solid is 0 0.50 calories per gram degree Celsius, times um, the temperature change of the solid. Well, the solid only changed temperature as solid for 6 degrees Celsius, okay? So that's that first part of the graph, okay? Then we need a Q for the flat line. Q, and so this comes out to be 12.5. Um, oh, this is 6 degrees. Okay, so 6 times 5 is 30, times 0.5 is 15.0, um, 15 30. Alright, so that's calories. That's just for that section. Okay, so Q goes M delta H on a flat line and it's a fusion delta H, so we need the mass is 5.0 grams times the heat of fusion, which it says is 80 calories per gram. So we're at 400 calories just to melt it, okay? And then it's all liquid. So if Q equals MC delta T for the liquid is going to be the mass of the liquid, 5.0 grams, times specific heat of the liquid, 1.0 calorie per gram degree Celsius, times the temperature change of the liquid. Well, it's only a liquid for 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, and so if you multiply all that together, you get 500 calories for that section of the graph. Hey, and then it boils. So it's Q equals MC delta T. Oh, just kidding. During boiling, it's a flat line phase change as M delta H. Okay, this times it's the heat of vaporization. So the mass is 5 grams still. It doesn't change its mass at all. And delta H of vaporization is 540 calories per gram. Okay, grams cancel, so how much heat does it take there? 2,700 um, calories, all right? So that's 540 times 5. 540 times 5 is 2,700. We're not done because it takes more heat to change its temperature when it's a gas, okay? So we need the mass of the gas times the specific heat of the gas times the change of temperature of the gas is 5 grams. Now, specific heat of steam is 0 0.50 calories per gram. Okay. And then the temperature change when it's steam is only 16 degrees Celsius. Okay. So we have to multiply uh, 5 times 0 0.5 times 16, and we get 40 calories for that. So how much heat? That's a total. So we have to take all the heat, the total heat. 
which is going to be 15 calories per gram. I'm mean, sorry, 15 calories from the first one, plus 400 calories for melting, plus 500 calories for heating up the liquid, plus 2,700 calories for boiling it, plus 40 calories for heating it up as a gas, and we find out that we have grand total 2,700 plus uh, 15 plus 400 plus 500 plus 40 equals 3,655 calories total. That's big. That's it. That's the most you can get. Five different sections of the graph. Each line gets its own calculation. Woohoo! Fun times. All right. So, if you look back, this was the delta H to, to boil it. All right. This was the delta H to melt it. The heat, well, not the delta H, but this is how much heat it took to melt five grams. This is how much heat it took to boil five grams. So, um, this was 80 calories, oh, just kidding, 540 calories per gram for H2O. This is only 80 calories per gram for H2O. So what's the deal? Why is this one bigger? Okay, because if you want to boil something, you have to get these molecules to overcome their attraction. So any force that's attracting these two particles has to be totally and completely broken so that each molecule is independent. That's a huge difference. If you're melting it, you just want to get any force that's holding these molecules close to spread out a little bit, okay? So you overcome the force that's making them right next to each other and let them be able to move a little bit, okay? This is a less of a change than this, okay? So um, melting or boiling is going to be a huge difference to overcome intermolecular forces, whereas melting is a small difference. Okay, steam burns are worse. Let's look at a cooling curve. So here's your cooling curve. Um, you got steam. What happens when it hits your skin? It turns into a liquid. Gas goes from gas to liquid. So the heat at being at a high temperature, okay, and then the heat at 100 degrees when it turns from a gas to a liquid, all of that total heat, okay, all of that total heat goes into your arm. The heat of being at a high temperature, in a single state and the heat of condensing all goes into your arm. Ouch is right. Okay, so steam burns have the potential energy from the gas being released. They release kinetic energy and potential energy because of the phase change. Okay, so what is really boiling point? Put this in your notes. The real definition of boiling point is when the vapor pressure of the gas is equal to the atmospheric pressure, huh? Okay, I'll show you on the next slide, I have some pictures. But every liquid that is turning into a gas causes gas particles, right? Those gas particles then come back and hit the surface of the liquid. That's called vapor pressure, the pressure that the used to be liquid makes when it's a vapor. So the real definition of boiling is when the pressure from the, va the um, gas molecules that used to be liquid equals the pressure that the atmosphere had in the first place, okay? Normal boiling point is measured for all things at one ATM. So it's basically saying the temperature when the vapor pressure from the liquid equals one atmosphere of pressure that was pushing down, okay? So that means boiling point can change. What? Boiling point can change because it depends on vapor pressure. So a high pressure, like in a pressure cooker, there's high pressure pushing down on the liquid. So then, the liquid doesn't change to a gas because it takes more energy to change to a gas, so the boiling point goes up. Now you open the lid. Oh, look, I opened the lid. Then the atmospheric pressure decreases, so that means that the vapor pressure can increase, and so that it means it boils at a lower temperature. Okay, how does this relate? All right, so here's the air pressure pushing down. Here's the particles that have already turned to a gas from the liquid. When this pressure equals the pressure from the vapor of the liquid, then this gas, this liquid molecule right here can turn into a gas and escape, okay, because there's nothing, the atmospheric pressure isn't holding it down anymore, okay. So, if you're up in the airplane boiling water, you only need to be 79 degrees because there's not, so pretend this, the arrow represents atmospheric pressure, okay, up here maybe have three arrows. Here, you might have 
Now let's go, or I said four, then let's go with five. Okay, as you go down into lower um, elevations, maybe you have six arrows of pressure, so you have to have a higher temperature. And then at sea level, where it's one atmospheric pressure, that means the air pressure pushing down is more, so the temperature which the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure is higher. Okay, here's a uh, graph of vapor pressure. So here's the temperature of the liquid, and here's the pressure that the liquid is exerting when it turns into a gas. So, um, so here's this line. As you can see, uh, water has different vapor pressure at different temperatures. 101.3 kilopascals is equal to 1 atm. Okay, so this dotted line represents when the vapor pressure is 1 atm. And so um, that would be when atmospheric pressure was also 1 atm, that'd be the normal boiling point. And you could see that water's vapor pressure is um, 1 atm at, and then at 100 degrees. Okay, so that means atmospheric pressure and water's vapor pressure are equal at 100 degrees when it's, we're going for 1 atm. Okay. You can see that this substance will have a higher boiling point because it takes a higher temperature to get it to a vapor pressure of 1 atm. So this would be a higher boiling point than water, but this substance would have a lower boiling point than water if the atmospheric pressure was 1. Okay, so it's time to review. Know your fusion from your vaporization. Math is fun, you know it. Heating curves tell us the equations. And each line segment gives its own calc. Steam burns are worse because of the extra energy in the phase change. Real boiling is when vapor pressure equals atmospheric pressure. And you should get to know Mr. Heatmiser because he's Mr. 101. All right. Keep studying. Get ready to go. Make sure you can do all this stuff. It's important. We got to draw the heating curve. We have to label everything on the heating curve. We have to calculate everything for a heating curve. Fun times, peeps. All right, peace out. Hope you had a good snow day.